Good morning. Good morning. As our birthdays for this week, we have one member with birthday, David Sadamire's birthday is tomorrow. And we have two couples with anniversaries. James and Barbara Rydell is on Tuesday, and David and Mary Graves is on Thursday. So let's remember them on their anniversaries this week. We want also to remember the children of our congregation in prayer because they're winding up their weekend Bible school this morning. So we'll have to remember them. Today's the last Sunday that we're collecting for the school supplies for the children. So the backpacks will be prepared later in the week. So if you have anything that you want to contribute, the box is still out there in the narthex. Let's continue to lift the Ukrainian people to the Lord in prayer. And as the tension in the world increases, we remember that Matthew 24, 6 says, You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. We need to earnestly pray that we are being molded to God's will daily and that our nation's leaders will be receptive to his guidance. Thank you. And we have our call to worship is out of Psalm 34, verses 1 through 8. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called, and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. And if you'll join me in our invocational prayer, God down. Grant to us, Lord, we pray, the spirit to think and do always those things that are right, that we who cannot exist without you, may by you be enabled to live according to your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our hymn of adoration today is Blessed Assurance, 369. Please stand as we sing.
Now our Old Testament lesson also from Psalm, Psalm 122. <clears throat> me. I rejoiced with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing in your gates, Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built like a city that is closely compacted together. That is where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, to praise the name of the Lord, according to the statute given to Israel. There stand the thrones for judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you be secure. May there be peace within your walls and security within your citadels. For the sake of my family and friends, I will say, peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperity. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. So we now come to the part of the service where we share joys and concerns. Are there any joys to be shared this morning? I, I got one to send for the month. I'll write another number on there. Uh, one, two, three. And I'm up to 120 months now. That means I hadn't had a drink in 10 years today. That's good. <laughs> That's good. Praise the Lord. Proud of you. It's hard to overcome that. I'm sure you do. We help for the Lord. Amen. Good. Thank you. Any other joys? We had a good United Methodist men meeting this past uh, week. Some excellent food, spaghetti, meatballs. <laughs> Give you credit for the meatballs. <laughs> yeah. And um, a salad looks so good, I hate to mess it up. <laughs> it does look good. All right, um, but we had a good message there about the Bible Release Time program, which was very successful last semester, and um, hopefully we're going to keep continue with that. Things I'm talking with you more about that. Uh, Okay. Um, also, why, any other joys? I know that I, I spent uh, yesterday afternoon with the, on the beach with the, the children. And I tell you, my hat's off to those three ladies. <laughs> boy, I'm telling you, that is boy, all day, all night, all, all night. Oh, they were really something good. First thing, I went in there, James wanted me to go into the bathroom and you know, where the towel rack is, he showed me how you can do some pull-ups. <laughs> you know? Oh, man. Uh-huh. Well, I was still sitting in my Sunday school class this morning. I could hear the choir practicing for about three minutes. Uh-huh. I absolutely one of their favorite songs. All right. And it was a blessing then, and I can't hardly wait to go. Uh, I know. Your faces. All right. Yeah, 14, 45 coming up yet. Right. <laughs> <coughs> All right. Yeah. It's fun to practice that too, you know. I have to have an energy to drink some of those practices, but you know. <laughs> okay. And you know, another joy is good to see many of you here. Amen. I'm here to say it. Good see many. Any others? Uh -huh. My sister had her hip replaced, <coughs> and they sent her on the same day and said she was in good condition now. Well, good. All right. All right. Outstanding. Yeah, so good. Hey, we got a, don't we have an engagement announcement there? Or? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I announced that last week. Oh, you did? Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, sure I'm I'm yeah. Yeah. okay. All right. Good. All right. Yes, sir. Well, it's a joy that they're still engaged this week. <laughs> <laughs> he is still That's a good sign. Right? That's a good sign. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Now, time to share concerns. Concerns should be raised up. Okay. Julie? My sister in law, Patty Dalton, uh -huh. is quite ill. Okay. Your sister in law. Okay. Okay. Um, Ron? Uh, my stepbrother Jeff Angel is having surgery again tomorrow to remove four cancer spots off of his liver. So, okay. He had cancer for over a year. They've been clear a year, but now four spots come back on the liver. And there is something in the lungs, but I'm not sure what that is. Okay. Uh, but he's having surgery tomorrow for the liver. Okay. Which is 
What's his name again? Jeff Angel. Jeff Angel. Okay, Jeff Angel. Okay, Caroline? Mark for healing. Mark, your husband for healing. Okay. Uh, yes, it's actually kind of a, a combination of joy. What my, uh, they put on my, one of my coworkers, Sharon Britt, who is, uh, is, has cancer, um, mm -hmm. it's being prayer for her. The blessing is that initially they thought she'd be out to the, the end of this semester, coming up semester, but it actually looks like she's going to be coming back sooner than that, so mm -hmm. we're praising for that. And uh, she was hoping to start the first day of school, um, but it's part of the more on Labor Day, so just continue her effort to share a break. So. Okay, all right. Ben? Uh, my great niece, uh, Jennifer, um, she has had septic brain surgery. Um, the pet scan showed that the tumor is back. Okay. Anybody? Okay. How's the lectures going? Coming along slowly. Okay. Making some improvements. All right. Okay. My great niece has a friend, uh, Cheyenne Rose, a charming, brilliant young lady who has just just discovered that she has a fast growing brain tumor and to keep her in the church. Cheyenne Rose. Okay. Um, anybody else? He just started in the first because he's taking his, uh, not chemo, but he's getting radiation right now. Okay. All right. Okay. You can call. Yeah, I just can't even play her. Oh. Okay. All right. We'll do that. We'll do that. Sure. Yeah. Uh, my neighbor, June Sangster, fell and she has a broken uh, ankle. She has a broken ribs and her cancer's back. She's in Grand Spring. Okay, what's her name? June Sangster. June Sangster. Sangster. Okay, June Sangster. Okay. Okay, don't want to miss anybody. Okay, um, unspoken request. Okay, no, a lot of burden on hearts. Okay, we're going to have a call to prayer. <clears throat> Father, it will make other people want to know Jesus, dear God. 
Dear God, we do everything not for show, but because we really truly believe in you, dear God. And Lord, help us to live our life in ways that other people will look at the way we live and the way we speak and want to come to you, dear God. Help us not to be discouraged, dear Father, to be steadfast in every ways and very intentional in reaching out to others and winning them into your wonderful kingdom, dear God. Dear God, we have many, many prayer requests this morning on our prayer list and all throughout the congregation, people are hurting physically, emotionally. Dear God, people are facing very scary situations, dear God. And Lord, combined with what all is going on in the world, sometimes, Lord, it seems overwhelming. But dear God, we know that you are not overwhelmed. We know, Lord, that you know everything. You know what's going on and that you are in control. Lord, help us to have your spirit in us. Help us, dear God, to overcome through your spirit. Help us, Lord, to reach out to our brothers and sisters into this world and offer your healing and your hope, dear God. And Lord, we pray this morning for you. We believe in divine healing. We believe in miracles, dear God. And we, Lord, we know it can happen. But Lord, we pray all of this in, in your name and in your will, dear God, that you will heal. Now, Lord, this morning, as we give our offering, we promise, Lord, to be good stewards of these gifts. To intentionally spread the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout this kingdom, dear God, in your world, dear God, we pray. And now, Lord, pray your spirit will walk with us this morning. And we'll all pray together the prayer that you taught us to pray, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Please not the temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. The ushers will come forward. We will now worship for the tithes and offerings.
<clears throat> Our anthem this morning is because he lives. And uh, we're going to invite you to be a part of the choir today. So if we get to the third verse, we're going to ask you to stand and sing with us on because he lives. <laughs>
thought I'd remind you of that. You don't have to do it, but you feel led to do that. Okay? Okay, now let us all have together <coughs> our prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Gospel lesson today is uh, 1 Peter 1, 3 through 7, and John 14, verses 1 through 4, and 25 through 27. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded by God's power into the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this, we greatly rejoice, though now for a little while we may have had to suffer grief of all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven geniusness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going to there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. All this I have spoken while still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. The Word of God for the people of God. So I always like that little verse there, blessed assurance, a foretaste of glory and divine. And uh, so it's right and reasonable to ask ourselves just exactly what that means. Um, so I'll go over a few things with you, share this with you. <coughs> Is there a peace in your heart that the world never gave, a peace that it cannot take away? Vivian. Does that sound like a verse in a song that we used to sing in the Church of the Nazarene? Constantly abiding. There's a peace in my heart for the Lord. Hey, used to sing that all the time. Oh, yeah. Although the trials of life may surround like a cloud, that peace has come here to stay. Philippians promises a peace that passes all understanding. Believe me, you know that there are clouds out there. There always are. Hardly a day goes by. At least ways in the spiritual world that you don't sense the cloud, but there can be a peace that is there. Does the world seem to sing of a savior and king? Well, the answer is it does not for those who are not believers, but those who are believers and who have that spirit, that foretaste of glory divine in their heart. We hear that song, we hear that music that helps us when we march to that drum because we know. That we have a savior, we have a king, and that's the king and the savior that the world needs to know. When that peace and calm assurance came into your heart at one time, did you feel your troubles melt away and your burdens be lifted? I believe it's important for every person who is a Christian to realize that that's what happens when the good Jesus comes into your heart. For some people, it's very dramatic and happens very quickly. For others, it may be a slow, dawning awareness as you travel through this journey of life. But believe me, you will know when you know Jesus. Okay? So, have you realized just how glorious and how wonderful and how beautiful and what a perfect Savior that Jesus, the Son of the living God, is? Because Jesus was not an ordinary man. He was very God, very God. Very man and very man, very God. He was truly, truly divine. You have that treasure that 
Jesus Christ in your heart, that treasure, that water, that wellspring, that fountain, it springs up and bubbles up into eternal and everlasting life in your heart. You have that. Do you know that he is coming again? Do you feel that? Do you look forward to that? Do you yearn for that more than anything else in the world for him to come again? It's not wrong or selfish to want Jesus to come. It's not an escapism thing. He has promised us that he will come. The early Christians believed that. There was an expression there they used. It's in the Bible. Maranatha. Come, Lord Jesus, come. We want him to come. It doesn't matter how much you might want to see that next football game, how much you want to take that trip that you want to take, or whatever. Believe me, Jesus is better than anything this world has to offer. It'll be wonderful and beautiful. The constant presence of His Holy Spirit, holy and divine. He never leaves you lonely. He whispers to you throughout the day and the night. This is a wonderful knowledge to have. This foretaste of the glory of mind. You know, folks have a lot of knowledge, but in this day and time, there's not a whole lot of wisdom to go with that. Have you ever noticed that? We got all kinds of stuff that we can do, all kinds of places that we can go. We can see way, way out there. But believe me, being able to say, see way, way out there, don't mean nothing if you don't acknowledge and have the knowledge of the one who created that. Guarantee you, you're lost. Having both the knowledge and the wisdom of God, that's the foretaste of the glory divine. The scriptures tell us and witness to us, even way back in the time of Daniel, and even further than that, Daniel chapter 2 says, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and raises them up, raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and the light dwells in him. And that was Daniel quoting scripture to King Nebuchadnezzar, the ruler at that time that they were in captivity under and, and, and telling him that really this is what it's all about, our God. And that's why Daniel would not deny his God and would not break those rules that, that, that he was given to by God. In Psalm 147, it says here, Praise the Lord for his good. Sing praise to our God for his pleasant and praise is beautiful. He heals the brokenhearted. He binds up their wounds. He counts the number of the stars. He calls them all by name. Can you imagine all the stars? He calls them by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding is infinite. The Lord lifts up the humble. He casts the wicked down to the ground. It's key there. Humility. To know that God. To know the way he is. How mighty and powerful is his wisdom and knowledge. That is wisdom. And that is knowledge. And believe me, that's better than having a high IQ. Okay? Believe me. Wisdom. Knowing God. Humility. Before God. Okay? And then the Apostle Paul, and he uses a lot of scripture here from Job. He says, Oh, the depth and riches of both the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. Or in the book of Psalms here, Paul also goes to the book of Job. He says, For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has become his counselor, or who has first given to him, and it shall be repaid to him. For him and through him, and to him all things to whom be glory forever and ever. And we all know Job and the story of Job and the difficulties he went through, but he knew in the midst of all that suffering, and Paul, that thorn in his flesh, that to know God and to have God's wisdom and to know what's going on and why what's happening is happening is the greatest that any, you know, anybody could ever have. It's a foretaste of glory divine. It's an understanding of what awaits us. And then the book of Revelation, something to hold before you this morning is a vision. The last, last chapter, Revelation 22. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me 
to give to everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the, through the gates into the city. Then Jesus, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the church. Churches, I am the root and offspring of David, the bright and morning star. And the writer of Revelation says, And the spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him who hears say, Come, and let him who thirsts come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life with him. So we will now move into our communion liturgy. We have a responsive petition. Let us test and examine our ways and return to the Lord. God has blessed us. We'll let all the ends of the earth God. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon God while he is near. The sacrifice acceptable to God is with a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. God will not despise. Let us draw near to God and worship at his footstool. Hear the invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have failed to use your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the need. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience to Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. The peace, the peace of our risen Lord be with you. Now let us all stand and look around and tell each other we love one another. Okay, we will now have the great Thanksgiving. We're after the Pentecost season. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathe into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets, who look for that day when justice shall roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever flowing stream, when nations shall not lift up sword against nation, where the not there shall they run and warn anymore. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven. We praise your name and join your unending hymn. 
Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery in the sight of the blind, to set up living those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people, and heal the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners, and by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church and delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice and union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, and Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly name. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your Holy Church, all honor and glory are yours, to Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, because there is one bread of life, we are many, or one body in Christ, sustained by the bread and wine of the Spirit of Jesus. The bread which we break is the sharing in the body of Christ our Lord. The cup of which we give thanks is the sharing in the blood of Christ our Savior. body of Christ for This is the blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Okay, now some music plays, you can come forward and receive communion.
and in response to the of Jesus, walk stand.